Howdy there YouTube. Uh, don't mind the Star Wars playing in the background. My wife is watching Star Wars for the millionth time. So I decided to shoot this video instead. So this was my last build, the AK. If you saw that build series, I'll put maybe the final one up here. I don't know. I haven't really finished shooting them yet, but I want to get this one apart and start it because I've just been dying to and I want to shoot it on video before I do it because this is the beginning. I want to make sure I get a before picture. But this is all going to be uh, cosmetic on this guy. I'm just going to leave it factory just the way it is because I don't have any uh, Type 7 gearbox parts version 7 anyway. So this was pretty easy to get off. It's just pretty standard. It was pin. You just got to drill the pin out. Um, so I'm probably going to take this off. I'm probably going to take off the rear sight. I'm definitely taking this off. And when I if you saw the introduction video or if I ever even bothered to upload it I'm gonna turn this into a light machine gun because it's so heavy it's 10.8 pounds empty so loaded you're probably talking about 11 maybe over 11 pounds with the battery and everything I did get a new PEQ box I hate this one it's really bad I just I don't even know why they bothered to tell you the truth other than they gave you no place to put the battery in the gun then I might rethink about how I'm going to do that too because they have the retro arms makes the little tube to connect the magazine to the drum like a flexible uh, feed chute so I think I'm going to do that uh, using one of the drums I already have inside of an ammo can so it won't cost me but the six or seven bucks for the tube so <clears throat> I'm going to set it up as a light machine gun and so what I've done is I've gone kind of Bren style here I've got these offset sights. Usually they would be for off this side, so you tilt the gun, you know, do your tactical thing. But this way, I'll have it like a Bren where they'll be offset to the side so you can get down low over the gun to, and still see down the sights. And then you can pop up and use the optic, even though I'm going to use this as a two eye open optic, and I'll probably have it not this far out, but somewhere out here. So you just keep both eyes open and hold the trigger down. And uh, I think I'm going to go with the Flectarn just because I was going to do the Vietnam Tiger Stripe, but I don't have any Vietnam Tiger Stripe out uniforms, but I have a bunch of this. And this works pretty good around here, so I figured that would be kind of neat to have it blend together. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to do just basically trace it off for the different colors, and then I'll match the paints with the airbrush. I'll just palette it out and then spray it on here and I'll spray the uh, red dot, the PEQ box, and these sights. They'll all get sprayed. Uh, these side panels I really don't like and I was kind of hoping that I could get some uh, longer eye, you know, uh, distance between the, the sights, sight radius by putting another rail on here. So I'm hoping that this distance here is like the same as maybe a G36 or something something I can attach to the other rail because this isn't a gun you're going to be running around with this is going to be deployed <laughs> if you know what I mean maybe run for a short distance but then drop down and start hosing so that's why I'm thinking maybe the PUQ box isn't the best and since I'm going to be running a drum anyway I can just have the wiring go up into it and be hidden and not have all this junk hanging out so I want to get this disassembled and I'm going to make my stencils but I think as far as the overall vision of what's going on this is it I'd really like to lighten this thing a lot and I might take my Dremel and a, a grinder and just cut some of this metal out anything that doesn't need to be there should probably be removed because it's just too darn heavy man and it doesn't need all this like I said this is just I don't need that I'm not putting a scope on it and then this rail section back here I really can't do anything about but it's in a dumb place I'm not really sure what the heck you're supposed to put there but there's rail there if you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all the parts that are silver. All the part, everything's going to come off that's silver is going to get painted camouflaged. So hopefully you'll enjoy that thing and the final product, and hopefully I will enjoy doing it because this one was fun and all, but you know it's pretty stock looking when you're done. There's not a whole lot of uh, you know payout or this one's going to be instant gratification that silver's going to disappear and whatever's in its place is going to look awesome because i won't stop until it is so stay tuned for that and i will cut 
So here we have the painted, well, the to be painted components, PQ box, the uh, degree sights, red dot, stock adapter, stock end piece, and then the two parts of the rail here. So I'm going to paint the inside black before I start because if I go ahead and paint it and don't do that, you're going to see that silver inside. So that's definitely going to be done. And I don't know that I can do Flectarn to tell you the truth because of just how little real estate there is to paint on here. I mean, I would just go ahead and do like I, I started doing, is making the different colors. There's the light green, there's the dark green, this was the black, and I started cutting it out on some poster board here. That's generally what I do. And then this is my basis stencil setup. But you can see here, I mean, there's that's not really going to work. I can use some of the little sections, but I'm going to have to freehand it. And that's kind of cool because I'll add some custom touches to it and I'll make it just kind of neat. Like, I'll make it look all burned kind of on the front here. and I'll just kind of do some little touches, make it a little airbrush fabulous. So this will be project number four, I think, for an airbrush. So bear that in mind. I'm no expert, but I've done a bunch of camouflages with spray paint, etc. So I know how to do that. Unfortunately, the old style of doing it isn't going to work on this because of just how little and complex the surface is. So I'm going to have to freehand it. And that's going to be fun. That'll be fun for me. Because I can just keep going over it until I get it right. So I'm also going to do the bipod. I'll paint it as a unit by itself. All these I think I'm going to paint by themselves. And that way when I put them together, it kind of like, uh, it's hard for your eye to pick up on any one component. I think I'm going to paint these two pieces together though. I think that just just for aesthetic purposes. If I was going to do it as a real camouflage, I'd paint them separate because those two juxtapositions of camouflage make it really hard for your eye to pick up on. <clears throat> so I am going to do some things just to make it look cool, but also I'm going to make the camouflage effective because, you know, you don't want to get shot because your gun's silver. And that's pretty much the reason for doing all this. So I did notice when I took the gun apart uh, that it had a really weird motor in it and the motor had some numbers, so I looked up those numbers. And it's just for a generic, like for a printer or some other type of electronic equipment. It's not even an airsoft motor, even though it is made by Chow Lee. I'd really like to get rid of it, but I've never done a version 7 before, so I guess I'll wait till it breaks, because it will. It's really junky. So when that happens, that'll be another video. I'm going to go ahead and grind off these corners, because I don't like them. They're real sharp. So that'll be another thing I do. I don't know, I might change the stock setup anyway. I might change it to something else since it is going to be a light machine gun. I might end up fabricating a tripod for it, so this might all go away anyway. But we'll paint it anyway, just to make sure everything's the same color. Okay, so we've got our base green. Kind of a field gray, really. Black on the inside, like I said. There's going to be some overspray, and that's okay. So that is this color here. So it's not exactly, it's pretty close. You can see there. So I have to mix all this stuff using these cheapo paints. So it's kind of difficult to get it exact. But it should be close and it'll, it'll be uh, not silver. So we'll continue with the next color. I'm going to go light to dark. So the next color will be this kind of pea green. And I figured out that the Christmas green and khaki make the best pairing for that. So I'll do that one next. All right, pea green is on. It's kind of a background color, if you notice. It's kind of a wide, big piece, so I tried to make it big zones, but I also put in some sprinkles, so that should get us through to the next round. Next round will be, let's see, I guess it'll be this dark green. It'll be the dark green or the brown. It's kind of a tie, so one of those two will be next. Luckily, the brown, I can just run straight out of the bottle. Uh, same with the dark green. The dark green is this guy here. So, we'll go with that. Okay, well here's the green. Now it's where it's kind of a leap of faith because now it's starting to look bad where it was looking good as I was going. Now it's looking bad. But as I lay the colors on, it should look, start looking good. What I've noticed that's kind of interesting is I always think of fleck tarn as being dots. But there's really not a lot of dots in the pattern itself. It just looks like dots, I guess. I don't know, kind of strange. I always thought of it as kind of a dot pattern, but it's not really. It doesn't really have that many dots at all, if you really look at it. 
they're more like little islands. They're not really that many dots, but whatever. So I'll keep on going. We're going to do the brown next because I was looking and the brown is definitely over the top of the green. So we're going to do the brown over the green. So that'll be next. Good. Okay, we're getting a little bit more fleck tarning. This is the brown on now. Brown was probably the most difficult color to shoot just because it didn't want to thin. But whatever, I got it to go. It's looking a little bit more like fleck tarn now, I'd say. That black really is going to make it though. That's what's going to set it off, make it fleck tarn looking. So, just to remind you, this was cut from an actual piece of fleck tarn, so you can't say that it's not fleck tarn, although the colors aren't exact. But it's pretty close for just an amateur guy messing around with an airbrush. I think it'll be pretty awesome. I'll be sure to seal it when I'm done, but get to that when I get to that. So, next color, black. And there we go. I think it turned out pretty good, pretty close. I wouldn't say it's exact, but you know, it's pretty close. So, I'm going to assemble it and we'll put it on a piece of cloth and we'll see how it looks next to it. But I'm pretty happy with it. I said it's not perfect of course and my base coat really wasn't the right color should have spent a little bit more time mixing that base coat to be the right color because anywhere it's still showing it doesn't really look that good but I think it'll look pretty cool once it's all together so I will cut and I will reass well actually I need to clear coat it first so I'm gonna have to let that sit overnight so I won't be able to reassemble it right away so hold on for that so here we go can you see it <clears throat> it blends in pretty good. It's not an exact match, of course, because I freehanded it, but I'd say it's definitely in the spirit of. Let me step back here a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty, pretty decent facsimile, I'd say. Of course, my printout's a little bit off color, and even these uniforms are different colors, based, you know, depending on the use and the year it was made and who made it. You know, they had a conscript army, so everybody got one. So there's lots of them out there in different stages. So just kind of running over this. I put that rem wrap on here. I have a video, but I really don't like using it because once you put it on there, it's pretty much permanent. The glue that's left behind is just impossible to remove. So this is just kind of a cheap site, so I didn't really care. PEQ box, I clear coated over the stickers. I realigned the barrel and the chassis. It was crooked. If I ever posted the other video, uh, it was shooting off to the, to the left real hard so I adjusted the chassis so that it was centered inside of it uh, I put these uh, my Bren sights on there man this thing is heavy I took off that little piece I didn't like it I put these Bren the, uh, the these sights and they're supposed to be up here off to the side so they have this little nub in here that I had to remove in order to make them fit flush on the front and the back but now that they're on there properly, man, they really are uh, well aligned. Unfortunately, I have nothing that I can put there. The the rail, uh, the rail, rails I have, I'd have to re-drill and do a bunch of tapping and stuff. And I really don't want to mess up my nice paint job. And it's not really going to add anything, I wouldn't say. I mean, it is airsoft, so you just look through the backside probably and just hose. But you got this guy. The only thing I really don't like about it is it's got a mirrored front. I mean, how are you going to make it look tactile and then put a mirror on the front? Although I suppose if you're looking at this end, you're probably in trouble. I'm going to try to devise some kind of kill flash for that. I don't think they sell one, but I'll make one. Um, other than that, I think it turned out pretty good. Now, I did uh, kind of an experiment to show myself and everyone else. This is what happens when you kind of just half-ass it. Uh, the, it doesn't really turn out as good as you think. You miss spots. You have a bunch of the base coat showing. So this I kind of just did as, and I, I didn't put one of the colors on here. The, uh, the kind of light, this like, kind of pea green color I didn't put on there because I ran out. So I just kind of wanted to show you, even though if, you know, you're trying real hard to get it the way you want it, if you just make one mistake with this, you pretty much ruin it. So I'll repaint this. But I just wanted to kind of show myself and you what happens when you kind of mess around and don't pay attention to what you're doing. So this is this side. It all turned out pretty good. The stock turned out pretty good. Uh, pretty easy to assemble and disassemble, I'd say. I did clip the sling swivel like I said I was going to and just rounded off the corners. So that's kind of nice not having the, ow, the little snagger on there. 
And I just clipped it off with some dikes, uh, some diagonal cutters. That's all it took to get it off of there. But other than that, I left it completely stock inside. Other than adjusting the chassis, it shoots fine. So I'll just run it till it breaks. That motor doesn't really inspire confidence. But then again, I think it's mainly the externals that you'd buy one of these for and then play with the insides as you want. So I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not perfect, but this is, like I said, my fourth attempt at airbrushing anything. So when I did have to freehand stuff, uh, I just kind of backed off and just re-stenciled it because I just don't have that kind of control and my airbrush isn't that good. So the battery thing is still up in the air. Um, I do, do have this PEQ box, so I suppose that, you know, in an emergency, I can just run a battery in there. But what I really want to do is put that drum set up on it. And I don't want like an Angel Custom or any kind of drum that's going to stick down because I want it to be run off the tripod or the bipod. Possibly a tripod, but that'll be a different video series. Same with the drum. So for that, this is, I'm calling this good. So this is kind of just the wrap up video and uh, sh shoots good. Um, yeah. I think that's going to be it for this guy. So I would really thank you for watching and any comments, leave them below. And definitely if you've done one of these Flectarn style paint jobs, I'd really like to see it. So if you could just go ahead and um, put the link down below. So thanks for watching. All right. Well, I didn't make it for looking at. So I'm going to throw a battery in it. I'm going to set up a course of fire and we're going to hose it with this thing. Uh, I don't see any reason to be semi-automatic with it the way I plan envisioning on using it. So I'm not going to bother testing it like that. I'm going to throw on the turn on the red dot, maybe even try out the sights a little bit. So there might be some confusion in the shooting, but I will edit all that out. And we'll just go and break some stuff. So that'll kind of be the payoff. So stay tuned for that.